When students come to investigate internal resistance, they will previously have studied Ohm's law and they will know that the slope of a voltage current graph is resistance. We'll need that when we're studying our internal resistance. To help us investigate the internal resistance, I have this board which consists of a number of low value high wattage resistors. Two cells we can select either an AA cell or a D cell. And to connect different resistors into the circuit, we connect a lead in turn to different resistors from this point here. These two terminals go off to our data logger. In this case, we're using the ALBA data logger and the ALBA application called internal resistance. So let's launch the software. We're going to load an application. The application is called internal resistance. Next, we would normally read the instructions given to us in the ALBA software. And what we will do is scroll quickly through these till we get to our circuit. You can see that we can measure the voltage across here, across this resistor. We know the value of the resistor, therefore the software can calculate the current flowing through the resistor. We will put different values of resistors in situ here and record in the table the values of voltage and current. These are other things that we would normally look at, but for just now, we will push on. Let's connect the circuit. I'm going to put two wires in the terminals at the end. And this is measuring the voltage across the terminals of the battery. And to connect the one ohm resistor, I plug into there. And that's the one ohm resistor connected. I selected the D cell because the switch is in that position and the software will direct me when to press this switch to take a reading. When I've got one reading I will take further readings by connecting to different resistors in turn. We'll say go. Our graph of the terminal voltage across the cell and the current is set up for us and we have up here the value of the resistor, the voltage across it and the current through it. We're going to start with a 1 ohm resistor, that's OK. To take a measurement press and hold the switch. We've got a point on our graph. We now change to the 1.5 ohm resistor and again point on the graph. And we'll continue in this way till we do all six values. And finally, point two. Now it strikes me that we have this one point here seems a little bit low. So let's do that point again. So come back down to the 1 ohm resistor. Um, so that 8.2 is now 1, 0. OK. And we'll take that point again. Looks better. And we'll say cancel. This point here we would like to remove from our final plot. So we go to our table, we come along to the use, double click, it leaves it in there but grays it out. Back to the graph, I'm going to click on the graph, 
No, I want to sort the points first of all. So I'm going to click on the column, resistance column, go to the table, and somewhere in here we will find sort. We would like to sort the data in ascending order, so OK. And that's our data now in ascending order. Back, click on the graph paper and let's fit a best fit line to that data set. Fine, that looks not bad. It would be nice if we could see where this is cutting the x-axis, the current. So let's extend that. So we go to our graph and we edit it. And we want to come to the maximum x-axis value. Let's make it 3 instead of 2. The auto scale is off so I can do that. And we say apply. That looks fine. And we say OK. So let's just check that, that, that this makes sense. Our resistance value is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if we look at the current, the current gets smaller. Bigger resistance to the flow of current, smaller current. Makes sense. But look at the voltage across the terminals of this D cell, this one and a half volt D cell. It's less than a volt at that point. At this point, the student will be wondering why, what's happening. Let's just check what's happening with our graph. The current is getting bigger and bigger, and as it does so, the terminal voltage is getting smaller. That's what we saw with our table. It makes sense. And if we keep coming back here, we get to a point where the voltage across the terminals of the cell is zero and there is a current greater than two amps flowing. That's a large current, a current greater than two amps flowing. We also note the equation of this line is given in the form y is equal to c plus mx and it's a negative gradient. The gradient is 0.737 ohms. Nothing over here has a value of 0.737. You know, where is that resistor? So coming back to our graph and coming back to this point here, we could ask ourselves if there is a current flowing that's so big as this, where is the energy going? Uh, is, what do we know that dissipates energy? And at student level, we can say things like a bulb, and there's obviously no bulb in the circuit. Things like resistance. Is a resistor somewhere? This, this 0.737? Is that resistance dissipating energy? And if it helps, take a, a PP3 cell and take a coin from your pocket and short it for 30 seconds or less. Then hand that cell to a pupil. And they're going to feel that it's hot. What's dissipating that heat energy? And the conclusion would perhaps be the most likely thing would be a resistor dissipating that energy, some kind of resistor. So let's now work with our table. We have got voltage and current. Let's add a column to this. So we come to here and we add a column. So it's telling me first to select the table. So now we'll add a column. And what we're going to do is to Take this this invisible resistor, this 0.737 ohm resistor, and multiply it by the current. And I'm going to get some sort of invisible voltage. But before I start, I'm going to head up this. I'm going to call it V 
I for invisible, the units are volts, the symbol we will call VI, and the color, let's have red, and that's fine. So I now would like to take all these current values and multiply them by the resistance, this invisible resistance of 0.737. To do that, I go to my column calculator. This invisible voltage is equal to the current multiplied by the value 0 0.737. Okay. And we notice that this voltage is quite big here and it's much smaller down here. And what do we get when we add up the voltages around the loop? This invisible voltage plus the voltage across the cell when it's driving a current. Well, let's have a look and see. Let's add another column to the tape. So there we are. And this column is going to be the sum of the voltages round the loop. This voltage and the voltage across the cell. So we've got the invisible voltage plus the voltage across the cell. Let's just head up the similar fashion uh, the total voltage and the units are volts and the symbol we will use the total voltage and the colour this time cyan ok and we'll do our calculation so we go to our column calculator and V total is equal to V plus VI ok Let's round this to one decimal place. So the column is still selected and I'm going to go to um, my clicking on the top, sorry. Let's click on the top and there we can see the facility for changing the decimal places displayed. And you can see that we have 1.6, 1.7, 1.6, 1.7, We have not used the words internal resistance. We haven't used open circuit EMF. These can now be introduced and the pupil will be able to, to, to relate these words to our open circuit EMF, the slope being the internal resistance. The, the ALBA software was used to obtain these readings. If you are not a user of the ALBA software and hardware, then you could gather the information using meters. There is a free version available to download of the ALBA software, and the values could be put into a table, and the student could explore, just as we have done here, the terminal voltage the internal resistance, the lost votes. Information about this programme, internal resistance, is on the website www.djb.co.uk. Thank you.